Hello there, everybody. This is David Blattner from Creative Pro Network and Creative Pro Week and InDesignSecrets.com. And I am here with the Lori Rulin, and we're going to be talking about InDesign and Illustrator and Creative Pro Week. Uh, Lori is a speaker at Creative Pro Week this year. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you if you uh, just showed up on the scene, Creative Pro Week is going to be uh, June 10th through 14th in Seattle. And it's a five-day extravaganza of all things InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, PowerPoint, Keynote, um, oh my gosh, Lightroom, After Effects, there's all kinds of stuff happening. All the tools that creative professionals use to get their work done, we're going to be covering during Creative Pro Week, again, June 10th through 14th in Seattle. Lori is a, <clears throat> excuse me, Lori is a speaker. Uh, this year was a speaker last year as well. Did a, a fascinating um, session last last year at the InDesign conference on anchored objects. And One of my that favorites. was... Um, <laughs> really blew people's mind, Laurie. I and mean, that was that was just great because people had no idea. They may have heard of anchored objects, but you not only put it in, in context, but you really gave people a lot of practical uh, tools, techniques to to start using that in their work, which was which was great. That was very, fun. Let's just say very high reviews. People <laughs> like that very much. So that was awesome. So I'm so glad you're here, Laurie. Um, you're in Chicago, right? In real life? I am, yes. I have uh, born and raised in Chicago, but uh, love to travel the world. I'm really looking forward to getting back or getting to Seattle. I've never been there. So really? I know. Uh, I've never been there. It's You're going to love it. It's. It, I'm actually, uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually live just outside of Seattle, and I've been here for like 30 years. So I love Seattle. I love this area. And June is going to be a gorgeous time to be here. Really great fun. Or It'll be pouring rain the whole time. We don't know. <laughs> Perfect. So one, one or the other. So, so Lori, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into this. I mean, you, you've been training for a um, number of years yeah. in, in all these tools. I have. Well, I studied overseas for my junior year in college, and I came back, and the computer lab had completely changed. And in the computer lab were these Mac SEs. And I walked in. I was like, what in the world is all this stuff? So my last year, I took as many classes as I could with uh, graphic design, and I learned Quark Express 3.3 or 3.2 or 3.3 at the time, and uh, <laughs> got a job right out of college at a printer. So I was working in the digital department. I was digitizing logos. You know, somebody would send that logo, and we'd have to get it into the, this new computer thing. And um, so I spent a lot of time in Illustrator, uh, tracing people's logos, redoing them. And it was great because I was able to see what I did in Quark and Illustrator at the time, a little bit of Photoshop, and then I'd walk out onto the printing, the, the press, and I'd see exactly what and how it came out. Great. And so it was, you know, I did a little bit of darkroom. I did uh, <laughs> stripping <laughs> at the time for the old school. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it really opened up my eyes to see what this whole printing world was. Wow. So, so, so really, yeah. when, when you were, I mean, you, you sort of got this, this deep foundation of the reality, sort of the analog side of it, as well as the digital, sort of right I side did. by side. Which I, I really loved because, you you know, I, you say kids these days haven't, you know, walked uphill or something to go to school. But <laughs> um, you really get an appreciation for how powerful these programs are when you really did sit there with your X-Acto knife and the waxer and you put a line or you you made a correction or something. You you, you just yeah. appreciate it, I think, a little bit better. So I worked for the printer for a couple of years, answered an ad in the newspaper to teach Quark Express uh, nights and weekends and fell in love with it, led to a full-time job at a training center. And then, um, I quit and I was on my own. I've been on my own now for over 20 years and I do training and a lot of graphic design now. And it's funny because the training leads to more graphic design and the graphic design leads to the training. Yeah. So sometimes I'll have people in my classes and they're like, okay, this is great, but my project is too big. I can't, I can't do it. And so that's how I've gotten a lot of my my projects and my referrals where they say, you know, the, the, the printer the, or the other client that I didn't like working with, here's all their files. But now that I'm seeing what's involved, I, I don't have the time to do it in my full time job. And so that's where I've come in quite a few times. And I've got some big, huge catalogs, which is where I got my love for anchored objects. Ah. So I've got a huge catalog that. 300 something pages and I've got line art and pictures and everything. And I, 
I saw the way that the other person had done it and it was just not usable for the long run. And so I spent the time and I anchored every object and I had all these settings to say, okay, the object is going to sit here and it's going to be up and down. And, and so I per per perfectly placed a couple thousand objects. And now five years later, making edits and changes and everything to it is, is e relatively easy because I just add something in, it all flows through. And I, it's, it's kind of fun in a weird sort of a way to be able to figure that stuff out and make your life so much easier in the long run. And so that's why well, I've kind of fallen in love with it. And it's such a, I mean, it's such a great lesson in how if you take a little bit of time now, or yes. in some cases, a lot of time, a now, lot of time, to set all of that up, set up the, the object styles and the anchored Paragraph objects, styles and, the flow, and yeah, right. If you set all of that up now and you really work it out, it's not that you're going to save a lot of time now. It's going to, it's, but right. over the next year or you know, multiple years, you're going to save a huge amount of time. Right. And, and I, I always try to stress that in my in my classes or my seminars, where I say. I know you might be thinking this photograph has a black one point rule around the outside and you've got 200 of them and now oh, it's only a black one point rule. But I've been in that situation where the client says, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's just, it'll never change. Well, now <laughs> three years later, what does the client say? I'd like to remove all these rules because I'm changing how I'm going to take pictures. And so I said, mm, okay, we, yeah, we can do that. And it takes me a minute and a half to go in to change the object style. Right. And so that's actually one of the sessions that I'm going to be doing at Creative Pro is uh, object styles, which I'm, again, is passionate about because there's so much stuff that you can add into that object style. Not only, a lot of people think, oh, it's only for putting a stroke or a fill or something on an object, but I've found you can set anchored object options. You can fit the pictures inside of there. There's so many things that you can do with these object styles. And so I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun putting the materials together because I'm going through some of my old projects and, and, you know, finding other examples of how some of these things can be used for my demos in the, uh, the object styles session. So, you know, it, it reminds me, I'm, I'm going to share with you a, a project that I was just working on uh, for a photo album and the photo album, I was, um, I started down the road of uh, the typical traditional route of making a bunch of different master pages with different text, uh, graphic frames at different places on the master page. And the more I worked on it, the more I thought, this is just crazy. And it suddenly hit me, the light bulb went off. I thought, I should do all of this with object styles. And I, yes. so I now have this, this uh, photo album uh, document. And I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll send it to you um, so you can, you can play with it. But it's basically, there's probably 40 or 50 object styles in it. But in, there's one master page, 40 different master uh, uh, object styles. And whenever you want to make a change to an image, you just apply a different object style. Because object style has that ability of actually placing things on a page and sizing them, and then you add that uh, to the frame fitting options, it makes object styles perfect for do doing things like uh, like photo albums. I had never, I've never seen that done before. See, that's uh, a really interesting use for it because especially with that with that positioning, yeah. Um, yeah, that that blew my mind when I started it. I, I did a a training manual and I needed a notes box mm -hmm. and there's people to write notes. Well, exactly what you're saying is add the positioning to it. I put it in the bottom left corner and when I needed it, I put it there. When I didn't, I removed it. So, oh, I, I love that idea. So I do a photo album for every year of, I've got a whole shelf full of them and I started out using Photoshop for some dumb reason probably 15, 10, 10 years ago. Well, it makes sense. I mean, typically it, when you're dealing with photos, the first inclination is I should be doing this in Photoshop. Right. You know, especially if you're, if you're compositing stuff on a page, but in fact, Photoshop is not the best photo compositing <laughs> tool. Not. InDesign is. Right. And so I switched over to InDesign and I, 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 it's so much easier now. And I too use the object styles for the look right. and the consistency and everything yeah. for the photo album. But uh, yeah, it's great. I export everything to a PDF and send it to an online company. And, and uh, so I've, I've got a hard copy book for every year, which is nice. And I'm a year so, behind. So Don't tell anybody. <laughs> you do a lot of stuff with InDesign, certainly, mm -hmm. um, but also Illustrator. And it would, I do. The Illustrator, I mean, you started off by, by tracing and, and so on, but, but now you're, you've taken it much farther. Yeah. So Illustrator is, is I find it a companion to InDesign. Um, Illustrator I use for the logos and the little infographics, the, 
you know, I was just doing a logo for a volunteer organization and um, just curved text. And the things that you can't do in InDesign, you do have to do those in Illustrator. And yeah, I spent a lot of my time digitizing logos and the pen tool. One of my favorite things to teach is the pen tool, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of people hate it. I, I know. A lot of people hate it, but I've got so many little ways to get people to understand how to use that tool because I've been using it for so long. Okay. And so I, I, I love to stand, give me an hour and I love to stand behind you and I'll tell you exactly the reasoning why these, these direction lines need to go that place. But, um, yeah, Illustrator is, is, it's a different beast. Um, but I try to break things down for people. One of my silly examples, and I, I try to use a lot of silly examples in my, in my classes to make people understand how to do stuff. And one of mine is, um, making a clipping mask in Illustrator, I make you think of making cutout cookies. So you roll cutout out cookies? the dough, cut it, yeah. cut out cookies, like, cookies, like holiday yes. cookies. Yeah. Okay. So I say, let's roll out the dough. Let's put the sprinkles on. And that's the stuff that you want to put inside of the mask. And then I say, you take a cookie cutter. Where does the cookie cutter go? It has to go on top of the dough. You can't put it behind. Yeah. And so the cookie cutter goes on top and you make your cookie and you stamp it down. And what do you keep is the cookie on the inside. Great. And so I try to use people. Everyone's like, oh my God, I never understood. And I always forget to put the object on the top. Right. And yeah. So it's just silly little things that I like to use in my classes to get people to understand some of these complex ideas that uh, InDesign and Illustrator will, will give to us. But it makes it more real. It definitely makes it more real when you start, again, yes. when you combine the digital, uh, you know, we're looking at a screen, and the analog, you know, we're making right. cookies. You know, as, as soon as people get that feeling of, wait a minute, I, I have an analog representation of this. I, I have a, a way of a real, a real world example of right. this. Right. The and they think, oh, goes yeah, in. I, I can't put that cookie cutter underneath and push the dough out. And that's right. why it's not working. So you're right. totally right. It's yeah, it's been fun. Of course, now I want cookies. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Sorry. Uh, OK, I'm going to go find some cookies after afterward. After yes. Work. So what so between all these tools, what do you find that you like most? I mean, if, if there was a smackdown between InDesign and Illustrator and Photoshop that, and that's so a on. Fun. That's a fun question, but I, I actually do have an answer. Um, I'm going to have to say InDesign. Okay. And here's a couple reasons why. Um, I was approached to create a timeline. And the timeline was just boxes of dates and what happened in, in the date. And I made it both horizontal and vertical. And I started in Illustrator. I'm like, oh, this is a great infographic. And I realized that I didn't have as good of a command of object styles. They have graphic styles in Illustrator, but... I'm telling yeah. you, the object styles in, in InDesign are, are just so much better. Yeah. Also, the borders and shading and paragraph styles and tables. I just I had so many things that were, were better in, in InDesign than I did in Illustrator. So I completely switched gears, and now it's a more flexible document. I find some of those types of things are better to do in, in InDesign. And, of course, you know I do these huge catalogs and park district brochures and uh, directories and things in, in InDesign and nothing compares to that. I, I love when people say, oh yeah, I have my brochure and I do it in Photoshop. I'm like, mm, let's talk. Uh, <laughs> Cause that's not the place well, to put it. You know, people will use the tool that they feel that they know the best Very ultimately, true. but it's really worth taking a little bit of time to learn some of those other tools better. You know, yes. if you, you can learn InDesign a little bit more you can do a lot more using InDesign. I completely agree with you. Understanding tables and object styles, all those elements in InDesign uh, can take you a long, long way. And I, yeah. I agree. There's so many times that I've started something in Illustrator thinking, I, I should probably do this in Illustrator. And I give <laughs> up and I go to InDesign. Right, I do. But that said, you're as you said earlier, there's a lot of things that you need to use Illustrator for you, right. you want to be warping stuff. If you want to be getting a, a true perspective, a lot of the effects that you can get in Illustrator. There's a use for Illustrator. I just absolutely. I mean, you probably heard me joke how Illustrator and Photoshop are my two favorite InDesign plugins. Yes, I because <laughs> right I agree. because ultimately it's all going to go back into InDesign, and that's mm -hmm. that's important. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, what, give us a tip. Do you have any any uh, fun tips that you could share with us about? InDesign, Illustrator tip, or some kind of tip. How much time do we know? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, I was thinking about this, and some of the more complex tips, those are great. But um, some of the most simple things that I show people in classes, even part two classes, I'm kind of, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, 
amazed or smiling at the fact that there's something new that everybody can learn. And so anyway, one of my favorite tips is simply holding down the space bar key after you, after you make a shape. So this works in both in design and illustrator and Photoshop for that matter. Yeah. And you can make a shape, square, circle, frame, text frame, regular frame. You can even make a marquee in Photoshop. And as you like click a, and a hold, selection. Yeah, like a selection. thank you. Yeah, just a selection. Yeah. And you click and hold and drag with your mouse and then without holding without releasing the mouse down, you hold down the space bar and you can move that frame around and put it anywhere you need to, and then release mm -hmm. their, your space bar, and, and now your frame is where you want it. I use this for captions where you can't draw a new text frame on top of something else. So I draw the text frame out on the pasteboard, right. hold the space bar, move, move it into place, and I've got my frame where I need it to be. And so I'll do that in Illustrator as well. And, and my, my favorite thing to do is in Photoshop where I need to select a circle or a ball or something. And yes. I... Can't, you, nobody can get that exactly placed this, the, the right the first time. So you draw your circle marquee and then you move it. And uh, it's just a, it's just a, such a neat little short, quick tip, but it works everywhere. Um, so I that's probably that. one of my favorites. I love that. And you're right. Is it, the little things are so often the most important. You know, there, right. there's whole techniques that you could get into, you know, multi-step techniques that involve lots of different features. But uh, and those are those are great. I know you're going to be covering a lot of those sorts of things also in your object styles and and uh, and other sessions, your Illustrator session at, uh, yeah. at Pro Week. But sometimes it's those little things where you're going to do that maybe 20, 50 times a day. And right. if you can just get that into your hands, you know, that's a muscle memory kind of thing where it is. just you know having your hand ready to hit that space bar. And whenever you're cr creating something, you just you just tap that you, you hold down that space bar and move it. I totally agree. That is yeah. a little thing that can save a lot of time. Well, and there's so many little um, buttons that you can press before you release the mouse. Mm. And I go over these, and I'll, and I'll definitely be talking about these in the Illustrator. Um, I've got that e Illustrator uh, deep dive session. So yes. we'll spend three hours talking about some of these Illustrator topics. And it'll be both basic stuff, but it's also I'm going to jump into some things that are a little bit more advanced, like the making cookies. <laughs> I do. I might have to bring some cookies in. You, I think you, um, you better have some cookies there. Yeah, yeah, you might have to have some cutout yeah. cookies for me. Um, but there's so many little things like that that people go, oh, my gosh, I wish I would have known that one last week. Here's here's another one. I did a, a couple examples for someone for the back of a pop socket and, uh, you know, the little little circle. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I gave them about five or six different designs. And so I had each one of them on a separate artboard. And I needed to go back and forth between zooming in to the one I liked or one I was working on and all the ones on the artboard. So there's actually a shortcut. It's, I have it written down here, command option, or sorry, command zero, we know is regular old fit in window, command yeah. or control zero. But if you hit command option zero or control alt zero, you're going to see all of the artboards that you have. So you can go and say, okay, I now I want this artboard and then command zero. And yeah. then you can see all of them, command option zero. So I use that one a lot as well. When I'm designing a logo for someone, I usually use four or five different artboards. Right. I didn't realize that that that, that worked in Illustrator. That, I'm going to have to try that. Um, I know. That, that, as you know, that same shortcut in InDesign, I use a bazillion times a day because it's yes. the, the command option zero fits the spread in the window. Exactly. So it's either the page of the window with command zero or the spread in the window with command option zero. And I actually have that shortcut mapped to my Wacom tablet so I can hit it, uh, hit a shortcut to fit everything into the window, my whole page, uh, my whole spread in InDesign. Do you use a Wacom tablet for uh, in, in InDesign much? Well, if you look at my desk, I have a magic mouse, a Wacom tablet, a rollerball, and a trackpad. And so, <laughs> and two, actually three different um, keyboards here. So I kind of go in phases and I go back and forth depending on how my arm feels. Um, okay. There are times when I'll use the Wacom tablet actually for InDesign. And I've figured out a way to hold the pen and type at the same time. It's crazy. But um, depending on how my shoulder feels, I'll, I'll use a couple different exam, uh, input devices. Um, huh. I do use the Wacom tablet for Photoshop and Illustrator a lot more than I do uh, sure. InDesign. But I, I have them all here. That's <laughs> times, great. That's times great. when I use them all. So. Well, it, it, the thing is, is that it's, it's so important to, to have options like that where you can move fluidly depending on what's most efficient what tool you're using, how you're right. feeling, what you're working on. There's lots of different tools. 
Um, what I was going to say about the, the keyboard shortcut, like the one you mentioned earlier about holding on the space bar mm -hmm. before you move the selection marquee or be, before you move the, the frame you're creating and so on. Um, I mean, as, you, as you're yeah. creating After it. After you make it, before bar. you release the mouse. There it is. Before you release the mouse. Yeah. Um, it's so non-intuitive. And it's something that's, right. I know it's a real challenge for Adobe and all software manufacturers. How do you add functionality and still make it intuitive or or discoverable? How do you find, you know, how do people find out about those sorts of things? And it's it's a real challenge, but it's, and it's frustrating because that space bar in some ways makes no sense at all. Like, why would it be you'd start dragging and then hold back down the space bar and then continue dragging? Right. I agree. And it's, it, and that just proves the point of spending a couple days, a couple hours getting some training is yeah. going to pay off huge amounts in the long run. And I, I've got a couple clients that I go to their office and they produce these big proposals. And she come, has me come in every couple months or so just to check what they're doing, mm -hmm. make sure that they're doing the latest things that they can do because they want to make sure that these proposals get out as quickly as possible. And she says, you don't know how much faster our team has become because we've just gotten instruction on some of these yeah. newer features. Absolutely. So as an instructor, you're like, oh, this is great. And so that's what I love to do is just show people all the all the little features. And I another silly, as, long as I'm thinking about it, another silly little thing that I use is select to effect. That's my phrase that pays. And in my classes, I'll say, okay, what do we have to do? What's the phrase that pays? And people will say, oh, select to effect. And what that means is one of the biggest tr struggles people have in these programs is it didn't work for me. Yeah. Well, I say, okay, let's back it up. First of all, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to bold a word. Okay, you have to select the word in order to get it bolded. Sure. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't have it selected correctly. I said, that's that's many times the root of the problem. Wow. And so I, I've actually got a logo, I swear, I got to get t-shirts made. Um, but I've got a logo that says select to effect. And it's so true because even in Photoshop, if you want to change the color of something, you have to select it. Right. Illustrator, you've got right. to figure out one of the one of the things that is a challenge for people in Illustrator is drilling down into those layers or into that object and trying to get the thing that they're trying to modify selected. Right. And so a lot of things that I talk about in my classes with Illustrator is how to get stuff selected, whether it's the shape or on the color. And so select to effect kind of becomes my my little buzzword in class. And I like that. I yeah, like that. So. It is it is critical to be able to select the right thing. And it, that that becomes even a bigger issue when you're dealing with uh, Photoshop. Photoshop. Yes. It'd be extremely difficult to select what it is that you're trying to affect. And uh, we have at, at the PSAI event uh, during Creative Pro, uh, Pro Week. I know you'll be doing a lot of Illustrator stuff. Uh, we also have Lisa Carney and Jesus Ramirez talking about yeah. uh, compositing and selecting. And uh, that's going to be both both of those, uh, both of them are going to really go into oh, a lot I of depth for selections. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be really good. You know, um, so so we, we better wrap this up. But I, I I'm looking so looking forward to seeing you in Seattle and having you experience our wonderful city. Uh, I, I really agree with you about the uh, the issue around training. And of course, the problem with training uh, for so many companies is it's hard for them to make the time maybe to have you come in or have you know right. have a trainer come in and oftentimes what's better is just 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 send somebody away I, just I agree. send them away send them to Seattle for a yes. let's, let's say send them to Seattle for two days three days a week and go really deep into InDesign Illustrator Photoshop PowerPoint Keynote all the tools that you need uh, to get you to work learn. done. And what I have found is that I've talked to people after, especially after last year, and yeah. I've talked to people and they said, I came back and I was so energized to be able to redo some of the materials that we've got with confidence. Yeah. And I was like, that's just, that's so cool to hear because it is a true community. And uh, I don't know, I, I'm looking forward to it again and, and uh, you know, getting back in touch with everybody and, and learning from from everybody else as well. That's what's that's what's fun too. Oh my gosh, there's almost always more to learn for sure. Oh. And so I, I love it for that as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you there and um, 
everyone out there in uh, in in video land. Uh, I am so looking forward to seeing you in in Creative Pro Week uh, yeah. in Seattle. And so thank you, Lori, for taking the time to share some of these tips with us. And I I, I have to go find some cookies. So if you'll excuse me. <laughs> I actually just made some yesterday, so I might have to go find them. I wish I could ship them to you. <laughs> I know. You're a thousand miles away. No. All right. All right. Well. All good. Looking forward we'll, to seeing we'll you in a few All months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Erica, thank you also to Erica Gamet in the back in the background who's been pulling the strings and making everything work for this this uh, this little interview today. And we will be seeing her as well. She's going to be doing a lot of very cool things at Creative Pro Week uh, on stage and sharing things. Uh, also, I, I want to throw out one more thing about Creative Pro Week. One of the great things about Creative Pro Week is that Lori will be also at the Ask the Experts table. And so it's not just about seeing people on stage. It's also about coming and just hanging out and having face-to-face one-on-one time to chat. Like, how did you do that? And, you know, tell me more. And having, I, I, having that direct face-to-face, I think, really, really helps. I have a very quick story about that. Oh, okay. We walked out. We were at one of the tables, and it was towards the end last year. And we all walked out to dinner, and this one person had come with us. And he, and he sat down at the table. He goes, wait a minute. I'm here with all, you guys are all speakers. How did I, we're like, no, it doesn't matter. Come with us, come with us. And he said afterwards, he said, that was the coolest thing because it didn't matter if you're a speaker or an attendee. We just all wanted to chit chat and exchange ideas and stuff. So that's what I love about Creative Pro is yes, these tables and the fact that we love to be attendees as well as being the speakers. Yeah. And so that's yeah. a, that's just a lot of fun. Thank and, you for sharing that. I think that yeah. that really reflects uh, what I see all the time happening at, at the conference. So yeah. that that's awesome. Great. All right. Uh, thank you so much. We're going to finish up and we'll be seeing you in Seattle. Have fun and uh, see you all later. Take all care. Right. Bye-bye.